This is Brent of the Brook Bush Institute, and in this video, I'm going to show you guys my favorite tibialis anterior activation exercise. I'm going to have my friend Melissa come out. She's going to help me demonstrate this exercise, and you'll see how easy the setup is on this one. We're going to use one of these monster bands, which I think you guys know as pull up assist bands. I tend to use the Sirius Steel bands. I like them, they're good, high quality bands. We're going to just go ahead and slip a uh, slip knot around the bottom leg of the table here. And then I just need to flop this over the top of her foot, just like so. Now, notice guys, I have this at the base of her foot and not at the top of her foot. I understand that the top of her foot would create a larger lever and make for more resistance, but you guys have to think about your tarsal joints, which can be a little sensitive, especially to this type of pressure. We don't want to create dysfunction trying to fix dysfunction. Now, if you guys didn't have a treatment table, the technique is totally the same. What you would do is you would hook a band to a heavy piece of equipment at the floor level. The only thing you're gonna have to do is probably elevate the heel on something like a foam roll because if you don't have just a little bit of a downward angle on this band, it tends to flop off the foot every time you go into this plantar flex relaxed state of this exercise. Now let's talk about activation exercise in general. We need to figure out what joint actions this muscle does and then figure out how to reciprocally inhibit those muscles that become synergistically dominant when this muscle becomes inhibited. So we have the tibialis anterior does inversion and dorsiflexion. That's pretty easy to do. That's going to be foot up and in. And in this case, we are going to focus more on dorsiflexion than inversion. If we focus too much on inversion, on inversion we tend to not be able to dorsiflex as well. And since we tend to lose dorsiflexion, I really want to focus on dorsiflexion and try to get it back. Now the overactive synergists for the tibialis anterior are the long toe extensors, especially that extensor digitorum longus, which also everts and pronates the foot. So that, that muscle tends to want to contribute to our, our pes planus or functional flat footedness. You guys know it as feet flattened on the overhead squat assessment. The way we're going to get our long toe extensors out of the movement is toe flexion, right? So we're just going to be kind of clever. We're going to use their joint actions at the toes to inhibit what we're going to do at the ankle. Now the tricky part is, is getting Melissa to go foot up and in while her toes go down. It's kind of the equivalent of this movement with the foot, right? So you're going to pull up and in and toes down and she's, she's practiced this a little bit so this isn't too bad for her and then she can just relax everything as she goes down. She doesn't have to keep her toes curled as she goes down, right? So foot up and in, toes down and then she can relax it. Now, tempo markings for activation exercise are either 422, concentrating on the eccentric, or 242, concentrating on end range. Again, since dorsiflexion is something we tend to lose, and tibialis anterior activation will help me keep it, I tend to use that 242 count on this exercise and really make people focus at the top. I want you to try to get as much dorsiflexion as you possibly can. Right? Get it! All right. Because if I've just done a lot of mobility work with her, right, I, wanted, I, want, I want good carryover. I want her to keep that dorsiflexion for a long time, so hopefully we keep making progress over time. Good. Pull up and in. Good. Pull up and in. Arr, arr, arr. Good. Now, the other thing I really like about this exercise is there's this really clever progression. This clever progression is being able to integrate a lot of commonly underactive muscles in my lower extremity reinforcing my heel strike mechanic during gait, right? So that moment when my heel strikes the floor and I need my tibialis anterior to eccentrically decelerate foot flat, I can kind of reinforce that during this, which may improve my carryover more. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm actually going to have Melissa go down on her elbows, right? She's in a little too much hip flexion here for me to get the glutes involved. And I'll start with going, okay, Foot up and in. I want you to lead with this big toe knuckle here, right? And you're curling your toes, so this really becomes prominent. Let's, let's get up as high as we can. And now I want you to try to squeeze your quad. And you'll find that a lot of people have a hard time with this because before, when they were dorsiflexing, they were trying to do this, right? They were trying to pull their whole leg up, right? And what we want is lock your knee, pull up like this. Good. You'll also find that this makes it a little easier to con them into holding that isometric at the top but we're not done yet. 
We're going to give her a couple reps of foot up and in, toes curled, squeeze your quad. Make sure we reinforce that a couple times. All right, foot up and in, toes curled, squeeze your quad. Good. Hopefully you're starting to get that chain together in your head. Foot up and in, toes curled, flex my quad. All right. Now what are we going to do? Squeeze the glute. All right, so foot up and in, toes curled, squeeze your quad, and squeeze your glute like you're trying to smash my palm. Right? And what you can do is actually just throw like a rolled up towel underneath their heel. Give them something tactile to squish. Right? Be careful. If so, you know somebody has some hypermobility in their, their knee, they, they tend to do that genu rock of bottom where they, they get into hyperextension, you can throw a towel under their knee so that they can squeeze their knee against that towel and not get into hyperextension. But back to our tactile cueing for this. Foot up and in, toes down, squeeze, squeeze, hold. Good. You think you got 15 more? No. <laughs> Trying to get somebody to do 20 of these, especially if, you know, they're one of these individuals who really compensates. You know, knees bow in, feet turn out, feet flatten, excessive forward lean, and they're so used to that compensatory pattern. This, this is something they have to work at, which is good, because if they keep working at this, I have to tell you guys, this exercise has given me better carryover than any other tibialis anterior activation exercise I've ever done before, which is why it's my favorite. Because I know it makes big change in my goniometry, and I know when they come in for their next session, my carryover is generally better. For the most part, I don't find too much difficulty having people do this as their home exercise, but we did make another video, just in case, you don't have something to tie one of these super heavy bands to of tibialis anterior activation that uses no equipment. So make sure you look up that video as well. You guys might wonder how I progress this exercise. Well, we can't really get more complicated or less stable in this position to, to, to continue progressing in that way. However, we can progress in resistance and I do recommend it. Uh, Sirius Steel makes these larger blue and green bands and uh, I think everybody should get to green. I do. Uh, at the very least blue uh, and I, the only reason I would let somebody get away with blue is if they were a smaller human being. Like Melissa I would expect to get to green. You know, there, there are heavier bands than this that might be going too far but think about what your tibialis anterior has to do. Every time you heel strike, especially when speeds get higher, when you're running, when you're jumping, your heel hits and your tibialis anterior is essentially the only muscle to slow your foot from just slapping into the ground. Right? It is your primary decelerator of plantar flexion. We have a lot of people who come in and complain about shin splints. We have a lot of people who come in and complain about these lower extremity injuries. A lot of them have this combination of, yeah, they don't have enough dorsiflexion and part of the reason they don't have enough dorsiflexion is because every time they try to get dorsiflexion with like a calf stretch or an ankle mobilization or calf release or all three if we're lucky, is because they don't do the other side of it which is strengthen their dorsiflexor so that they maintain that dorsiflexion. They use that dorsiflexion during their daily activities. Guys, give this exercise a try. Set up a few stations in your gym. I can tell you when I'm treating, I just leave a few of these bands tied around the legs of my table so that I can just flop them up. I can get in and out of this really quick and I can even add like tibial internal rotator activation if I want, right? And then maybe go right into my glute activation if I, if I want to. It's all right there set up. You guys could just have some bands hooked around like your your power racks or your cable columns so that people can be getting this in in their warm-ups, right? If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the box below. I hope you enjoy this video.